Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we will tackle the Philippine English Revisited by Isabel Perfanco Martin. This is a continuation report of Miss Adolfo. There are also inner circle mindsets that uphold English at the expense of Philippine languages. One example is now the infamous commentary of columnist James Soriano who drew the ire of many Filipinos because of his statement that the Fili Filipino language is the language of the streets. Soriano writes, For while Filipino may be the language of identity, it is the language of the streets, it may have the capacity to be the language of learning but it is not the language of the learned. It is neither the language of the classroom and the laboratory, nor the language of the boardroom, the courtroom, or the operating room. It is not the language of privilege. I may be disconnected from my being Filipino, but with a tongue of privilege, I will always have my connections. So I have my education to thank for making English my mother language. Soriano received numerous negative comments about his column, including hostile reactions that went viral in blogs and social networking sites, such as following comment from a certain ego, which stated, Mr. Soriano, your English may be the language of the learned, but your brain is not the brain of the learned. But Soriano was not without defenders. There were also comments from readers who argued, agreed with him as follows. If speaking and listening in English will make a person better and succeeded life, forget about the culture as the Filipino dialects. We think that adverse reactions Soriano has been getting is being caused by the fact that the truth hurts. Readers just can't accept the fact that even in language, there is a divide in Philippine society. We know of the divide in wealth, opportunities, jobs, justice, and education in Philippine society where the rich are able to get the best and the most test while the poor make do with meager offerings. The truth hurts to know that also exists in language. Sadly, as one comment above points out the socio-economic rifts that exist in Philippine society trickle down on issues of language as well. It is a truth that does hurt indeed. But now let us proceed the outer circle of English in the Philippines. In a discourse of inner circle English in the Philippines, several lexical innovations have been widely documented of Bolton and Butler too in 2004. Coinages such as hold upper, which is rubber, academian, which is academic, presidential, which is presidential candidate, have been reported as commonplace and acceptable among users of the language. However, I wonder if inner circle Filipino speakers of English would look kindly on Filipinos who use less formal or more colloquial coinages, such as meldfic, which is to be extravagant like former first lady Imelda Marcos, or noinoying which is to laze around like Philippine President Benigno Noynoy Aquino III. I know of Filipino teachers of English who mark as incorrect expressions which have become commonplace in everyday conversations, such as close the light, I'll go ahead, and for a while. And what of Filipinos who code switch freely even in domains that are traditionally considered to be English-only domains, such as the classroom, business meetings, and legal proceedings? These questions reflect a concern about the extent of inclusivity of educated Philippine English. Such questions also point to the extents of an outer circle of English in the Philippines. Among Filipinos who also belong to the educated class and may also be aware of Philippine English as a distinct and legitimate variety, use both standard and non-standard forms, but either powerless to support these languages and or aviablant about promoting them. The outer circle includes stakeholders of the English language who find the more critical approach to the language as, in the words of Matsuda in 2009, desirable but not necessary, according to Tupas in year 2006 to 2010. Sees this in seven Filipino student teachers he studied. In this study, or in his study, Tupas finds that the student teachers believe that First, Philippine English is not an ideal model in English language classroom. Second, students must be taught standardized English because this too is empowering. Third, standardized English should be taught as form, but Philippine English should be used as content. And fourth, in teaching standardized English, code switching should be used whenever necessary to communicate local content. Despite 
The seemingly ablevant stance these student teachers have towards the local English variety, Topas argues that these beliefs represent a form of resistance, a position that is both empowering and disempowering, catipulating and resisting, a testament to the big conditioned practices of their work as English language teachers. In a previous work, I have also found in similar attitudes about Philippine English among public school teachers in the country, according to Martin in year 2010. They have argued that an awareness of the existence of a Philippine variety of English does not necessarily translate into acceptance of this variety. This was the conclusion made from a survey of 185 public school teachers, mostly from the Visayas, in deliberate attempt to elicit views from the periphery. In this survey, a large percentage of teachers reported that their target model for teaching English was American English, even if most of these teachers considered English to be a Philippine language, and that they spoke Philippine English. When asked why American English was their target, the teachers offered responses that reflected a sense of helplessness and powerlessness to offset the elevated status of American English and keep up with such comments. First, American English is the universal language. Second comment is that American language is universally accepted. Third, it is an international language. Fourth, it is internationally understood. Fifth, American English is most preferred by many companies who have networks in other countries. Six, it is clearer, more widely used, and a lot of Filipinos go to the U.S. to work. And seventh, I want to be a realist. The last comment, the desire to be realistic in their dealings with languages may reflect the mindset of outer circle users of English in the Philippines. This outer circle situation is described by Brothuax in year 2003 as having been affected by conflict between linguistic norms and linguistic behavior with widespread perceptions among users that Anglo-American norms are somehow superior and that their own variants are therefore deficient. Thus, on the question of acceptability of Philippine English among outer circle users in the Philippines, the answer may be yes, but if one were to present the stages of acceptability of a language as number one, beginning with recognition of the variety and its distinguishing features. Number two, moving on to a concurrence of these features. Number three, proceeding to promote and safeguard this variety, then outer circle Filipino users of Philippine English may have reached only the second stage of acceptability. And this situation is a consequence of the sense of powerlessness that outer circle members feel, especially in the context of English language teaching. Now let us proceed to the expanding circle of English in the Philippines. A newspaper article in 2011 reported about a Filipina talking to her non-Filipino boyfriend in funny English. This is read in the year 2011. The article documented the following utterances as you can see on the PowerPoint. The Filipina told his boyfriend, Yes babe, this 3 p.m. is hot but this 4 p.m. it's coming rain babe. Oh babe, look at your dog is look at me. Babe, I was hugging the cat and then the cat cuckoo with me and that the cat is so dirty. The cat is a baby and I hate the cat. The cat is little cat. Yuck. Babe, just drink water and thermometer. I know you're not feeling well. Those words are uttered by a Filipina to his non-Filipino boyfriend. Well, the Filipina's funny, non-standard English is ridiculed by those who heard her, including a child who complained to his mother that the Filipina spoke in wrong grammar. Such, such situation is not uncommon in the Philippines where a majority of users of the English language belong to expanding circle category. These are Filipino users of English to whom the language of whatever variety is largely inaccessible, even as it remains a requisite condition for upward mobility. Filipino boxer and Sarangani congressman Manny Pacquiao, also known as Pacman, is one famous person associated with funny English. In 2011, he was criticized for tweeting in wrong English. In response to this criticism, Pacman tweeted, It doesn't matter of the grammar as long as they understand the message. Thanks. Another ridiculed Filipino in 2008, Miss Philippines World Janina San Miguel, who was widely criticized for her, her ear-splitting English, 
the beauty pageant organizers will also admonish for allowing someone who spoke funny English to win at the competition. The issue made national headlines prompting lawmakers such as Cebu Congressman Eduardo Golas to protest that she is a Filipino and English is our highly favored second language, so people expected more from her. For Filipinos belonging to the expanding circle category, using English may become a painful, humiliating experience. And that are the um, examples, um, Congressman Manny Pacquiao and then the Miss Philippines World, Miss Janina San Miguel. With English having penetrated most domains of Philippine society, Filipinos cannot avoid using the language at some point in their lives. Certainly, this is a situation that does not correspond with ESL conditions, as the Philippines is often described to have. And we are now on our conclusion. In this paper, written by Isabel P. Franco Martin, I, this is presented in the Philippines, an outer circle country in Cocker's three circles model, as having three circles with them. This comprise an inner circle of educated elite Filipinos who have embraced the English language, whether standard American or Philippine English, and, active, and actively promoted. An, out, an outer circle of Filipinos who may be aware of Philippine English as a distinct and legitimate variety, but who are either powerless to support it and there are ambivalent about its promotion and an expanding circle of users of english in the philippines to whom the language of whatever variety remains a requisite condition to upward mobility but is often very difficult to access and exploring the issue of acceptability of the philippine Angli english there may be a need to keep in mind each of these circles of english in the country for the educated educated class who make up the inner circle, it is clear that Philippine English has gained significant headway. Some in this circle have been moved to recommend that the variety be taught in schools. In contrast, members of the outer circle recognize Philippine English as a distinct and legitimate variety, but fall short of promoting the variety. Owing to a sense of powerlessness, they have an encounter reacting the dominance of American English. And finally, in an expanding circle of English in the Philippines, there is a little talk, if any, of Philippine English as a variety. And for members of this expanding circle, the status of Philippine English is a non-issue. These three circles within the outer circle experience of the Philippines do not exactly match each of the circles in Cocker's model. And it was not my intention to mirror the Kachavarian framework in presenting the varied and complex phases of English in a country. Instead, what I have attempted to do is build on the three circles model in order to provide a more nounced description of English in the Philippines and this way present a number of insights into issues relating to acceptability of Philippine English with Philippine society. And that was the study of Miss Isabel Martin, Philippine English Revisited. I hope that you have understand this report and this topic. Thank you for listening and God bless.